roll call. All members present this evening, along with Superintendent Blake Conley and Recording Secretary Jessica McFarland. Our upcoming board meetings, March 14th, 2019, will be a public work session at the administration office at 6 p.m. March 18th, 2019, will be a regular meeting at the high school at 6 p.m. April 11th, 2019, will be another public work session at the administration office at 6 p.m. April 15th, 2019, will be a regular meeting at Mentone, 6 p.m. May 16th, 2019, will be a public work session at the administration office at 6 p.m. And May 20th, 2019, will be a regular meeting at Akron Elementary at 6 p.m. We'll move on to Spotlight on the Valley. Number one, welcome to the introduction of new employees. Thank you, Mr. Heckman. Uh, our one employee is not here uh, this evening in terms of being recognized. So we'd like to move on to number two, uh, recognition of a world-class teacher, Tyler Kirby, and our pillar award for outstanding support staff, uh, Lupe Quintana. So Mr. Backus has some information here, and we'd like to present these folks. Uh, Lupe, if you come up first. I'm going to turn this on. I don't know what you needed to hear me, but... Um, I'm going to read off a little bit here on Lupe. Uh, Lupe came to us in 2016 from the high school in order to take over the daytime custodial opening that we have available here. Uh, she's married to Jesus and has four children, Fernanda, Jesus, Emiliano, and Melanie, and they all attend Tiffany Valley schools. In her time at TVMS, she's become a very reliable part of our team. She's always got a smile for people. She's quick to help out the staff and students, and she's a diligent worker and a trusted employee. During the fall, she stepped up and took over for our head custodian, who was on leave for a knee replacement and covered her time on the day shift. Um, we have a great custodial team. I want uh, the board to know that overall. Our building's well maintained, it's always very presentable, and our crew has a lot of pride in what they do, and it shows in this hidden gem of our community. So, um, Lupe is a great fit with our staff team here at TVMS. And we're proud to recognize her as our Tiffany Valley Pillar Award winner for Outstanding Support Staff. fifth year at Tiffany Valley Middle School and he teaches pre-algebra and algebra for us currently. He came to us from Western Boone. Kyler's a Columbia City High School graduate and a Manchester University alum. Uh, he's married to Monica and they recently had their first child, Paxton. Kyler's an outstanding teacher and coach for Tiffany Valley. He coaches football in our middle school and is developing an increasingly successful wrestling program from the elementary all the way up through the middle school and high school. He's often here late in the evenings running his elementary feeder program. The passion Kyler has for developing his program is matched by the passion he has for seeing kids reach success in his classroom. He's helped our math team develop into a strong unit that's seeing achievement increases yearly. Kyler was a close runner-up in our uh, Teacher of the Year voting, and the following story I'm going to share tells a little bit about him. Uh, we had a home football game this year. We have a young man on our football team with autism and he allowed a long pass play over his head and just had a very severe meltdown. And, you know, as I'm watching this kid have his, you know, bad moment, I see Kyler running down the sideline, taking him by the shoulder, bringing him back to the sideline and talking to this kid and getting him calmed down and getting him refocused. You know, that's just kind of the guy he is. Some of these kids that are in these situations wouldn't be able to play for somebody, you know, unless they had the compassion and care that Kyler does. So. You know, he's dedicated his time, his talent, and his heart to make kids in Tiffany Valley successful on the, on the mat, on the field, and in the classroom. And he truly is a world-class teacher and coach, and we're very proud to have him on our staff. Thank you, Mr. 
we'd like to recognize um, SRO, SRO uh, Rick Shepard. And uh, Rick, can you please stand? Uh, Rick is not a stranger to Tippecanoe Valley. He graduated in 1986 from our high school. Uh, after high school, he received an Associates of Applied Science degree and played basketball for Joliet Junior College in Illinois. He joined the Kosciuszko County Sheriff's Department in 2002, working first as a confinement officer in, in the county jail. Through his years at the Sheriff's Department, he was promoted to the patrol division uh, and to the ranks of corporal, sergeant, and lieutenant. Uh, SRO Shepard has two grown children, Braden Barber, two, uh, he's 27, lives in Columbia City, he's a police officer. Cameron Shepard, 24, Whitley County Corrections Officer. So it's a family business. Is that, I guess so. There you go. Well, we just want you to know how much we appreciate having you come back to Valley. And uh, I know our, our administrators and our staff, we're, we're proud to have you back and, and everything that you're doing to build relationships with our kids. Well, we get once a year to celebrate what we do at our school, and so I always try to take a little bit of time here and put together some information for you guys. There we go. Um, just about the great things that are going on at Tiffany Valley Middle School. So um, bear with me a little bit here. Uh, we've got a lot of things we want to talk about, but like I said, this is our one chance a year to really showcase to you guys what these people sitting here do for our kids every day. So we're going to focus on the mission. So we're going to start off talking about what we do here to develop character in our kids. And we do PBIS. Uh, we have a drawing every week for kids. If you, when we take our tour later, board members will go around the corner. You can see the, the cabinet we have in the hallway where we just have prizes for kids that, that they earn from the drawings for PBIS. We sold Viking cards to help raise money for our field trips and our school. All the kids in the picture with the limo were the top sellers I get to go have lunch or, or riding a limo for lunch. It's McDonald's, um, or Viking Way. We put out staff member of the week every week, and we're not just celebrating teachers, we're celebrating everybody. So cooks, custodians, uh, paraprofessionals, everybody on our staff we try to recognize through that program. Early in the year, we had Nathan Harmon from Your Life Speaks come and speak to us here. Uh, and he also talked to the high school, we talked about making positive choices, gave an anti-bullying message. Uh, talk about handling peer pressure, mental health, overcoming adversity, and most importantly, the basis of this conversation was making good choices. And that's something that we try to work with our kids all the time about. Um, every morning after we do a moment of silence and Pledge of Allegiance, and a few catch-up announcements we need to, we wrap up morning announcements with a piece from Project Wisdom. These are all about good character choices. They're all about making good decisions, being respectful of other people. So we do the reading wrap up the announcements and get on with our day. Community outreach is huge. Our school does a ton of things to help our community. This is just a small list of things we've done this year. Um, Unified Game Day and Unified Banner School, which I'll get to a little later on. Michelle Martinez is our Keys representative, so she works with Kosciuszko Education Youth Services. Uh, we had a green and purple day that our kids organized for Selena and Maverick after the bus accident. Uh, weekly Helping Hand Support. This has stopped a little bit because of the weather, but every week Kathy Olson's class is taking a couple kids out to help Helping Hands get set up for their weekly food distribution. So we've got a uh, connection with them. Uh, we ran a no-name calling week. We've got a Visit Up Lunch coming up. Eric <coughs> Tree event happens here in our school. Our student council helps with that event. Uh, we raised money for Gunnar Christman to buy glasses. Gunnar's a blind student able to buy glasses to help him see. We raised enough money here and helped out enough that he was able to turn around and buy a pair of glasses for another kid in their, their parent group that they're with based on the fundraiser. We just wrapped up Pennies for Patients last week. Mr. Williams got to kiss the pig on Friday. Um, last year our staff raised over $1,000 for Riley. We do College Go Week. We run our Viking Vittles food program. 
Um, that's uh, Mrs. Early, who was our teacher of the year, came up with this, and you guys have heard just what we do with that, but it's still going every week. So, Scott, what's the mix it up lunch? Mix it up lunch, basically, we run a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade lunch period here. So, on the mix it up lunch day, we take a third of the sixth graders, a third of the seventh graders, a third of the eighth graders. And they go through the lunch line and they came out, they come out, they either get cards or stickers, and they have to go sit at that table. We'll end up with other sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, and then the high school peers come over, and while the kids are eating, they just have fun activities with them, get to know the games. So it's a chance for kids to sit with other people, learn who other people are, and we've done this the last two years. We had it planned already. Weather has bumped it down, but it's scheduled for March 1st. Mary and Jerry's helping hands. We help every year at Thanksgiving. We do a food drive and our kids go out and help them. This year our kids were also able to go out and help during the Christmas distribution. The other thing that we do here that uh, Mrs. Thomas and Mrs. Martin are no longer with us here at Valley, but they started a Veterans Day program a few years ago. And if you haven't had a chance to be here and see it, it's awesome. Um, our choir sings, our band plays, Community members are invited. We've had a big turnout of veterans come to watch. It's been a really fantastic showcase for our school and a good community connection. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the eighth grade was able to go to Grace College and listen to Chris Singleton talk. Chris is a Cubs minor league baseball player whose mom was killed in a church shooting. So he talks about overcoming that. Again, good choices. How to lead a positive life, how to forgive people. So, good, good character discussion for our kids. Um, this is something we're really proud of. Uh, this just went up uh, a couple weeks ago. We were able to raise $500 through the dance, and we're going to become a Champions Together Unified Middle School. So, we're waiting on the official banner that will go in the gym, but um, we're joining the high school in the Special Olympics sport. In our Proud to have the sign up in here, and we'll be proud to get the banner in the gym coming up. So, we also work really hard at the middle school to develop leadership. Leadership comes from a number of different things, but I believe very strongly it comes from athletics, uh, opportunities to step up and do things above and beyond the lead. So, our spell team won the RRC this year. Sorry, that didn't come out very clear, but we won nine in the last ten years. They're a strong group. We ended up 19th in the state in class three this year at the IASB Spell Bowl. It didn't qualify us to go back to the state championships, but we're waiting on three more banners to get done from Winning Edge to, to hang up here from the five trips that our kids have made to the state finals in Spell Bowl. So really proud of the work they've done there. Script Spelling Bee is the individual spelling bee. Katie Cornett was our champion and went on to represent us at Kosciuszko uh, County meeting for Shea Martin. Martinez is runner up. NIA Ramirez Brito, Colton Crabb, Shirley Hodge, and Emily Holstein were all finals. So really proud of that group of kids. They had to take the list, go study on their own, and then go through the spelling bee and make it there. Last spring's class of Honor Society kids. Honor Society is a great way for um, folks to step up and be leaders. Mr. Williamson this year put on a play for our middle school kids. So a bunch of middle school kids ride the bus over the high school after school and practice and they put on play long or fairy tale unit uh, right about Thanksgiving time. We did a really fantastic job with that. So we're starting to develop some drama skills in the kids at the middle school for his play in high school. We've got 92 kids in choir this year at the middle school in three grade levels. Um, a group of them just participated two weekends ago at Honeywell Center in the uh, Circle of the State, um, the song, and that's a really awesome performance. They sang the hymns of every one of the branches of the Armed Services during our Veterans Day program. Did an awesome job there. Um, it's a good group. Ms. Ryan's got 91 students in the band this year. Um, they perform a winter spring concert. They performed at the Veterans Day program as well. Um, not sure if IPFW Honor Band was part of this year, but I know we've done that several times in the past. And then the solo ensemble contest, McKenna Smith, Anna Ramirez, Rito, Jordan, Shoemaker, all were gold. 
Warren Rich had a perfect score for gold. So um, they do an outstanding job. Uh, Ms. Reiner does an awesome job. And actually, Mr. Cooper, I don't know if he bribed her or just asked her nicely, but uh, our eighth grade band actually played in our last girls basketball game here. So uh, that was a first as far as I can remember in my 20 years of being here. And it was really exciting for the kids to have the band play while they were playing the basketball game. So excited about that. Just running through sports real quick. Football teams this year, 7th grade, 6 and 1. They were co champions of the RRC. 7th grade went undefeated, won the conference. Uh, cross country, team wise, wasn't super strong, but had some really good individual performances. Chesney Miller won every race she ran in except two. She finished the RRC in second place, and she was fifth at the New Haven meet. And if you know anything about the New Haven meet, it's like 70 schools, so it's a big deal. Volleyball, we were south of the tourney runner-up in seventh and eighth grade both, and then our eighth grade made the final four of RRC. <clears throat> boys basketball, the sixth grade boys uh, won the Milford tournament this year. Unfortunately, weather canceled their Valley tournament. Um, the eighth grade boys won our Valley tournament, and then just a couple weekends ago, they won the, the conference. So they were the RRC champs. Yeah, they had a really outstanding season, and that'll be a great group of basketball players moving up for our school. Girls basketball, the seventh grade girls were our Valley Tourney runner-up. Eighth grade girls won the Valley Tourney. Our eighth grade girls were RRC champs as seventh graders last year, and their tournament starts tomorrow night for this season. So that eighth grade group of girls is a strong group of basketball players as well. It's got to they play here, or are they on the They're at Peru tomorrow night. If they win, they play out Wabash on Saturday. Uh, we talked a little bit about Mr. Kirby a little while ago, but last year uh, at the end of wrestling season, um, our middle school wrestling team ended up conference runner-up, and it was really close, wasn't it? Like one match. So, you know, we've, we've got numbers, we've got kids wrestling well, and two of the guys on this team made it semi-state this year at the high school level as freshmen. So there's definitely some, some promising future with those guys coming up. Uh, cheer squad, a bunch of girls cheering this year. Mrs. Thomas uh, coached during football season. Mrs. Miller and Sandy Ann Hearn during basketball. Last year in the spring, uh, we had our first soccer season, middle school ever. And the combined co ed team went 8 1 and 1. First year out of the game. We had over 30 kids participate. Uh, we expect to have at least that many again this year, if not more. So um, hopefully this is going to feed into Mr. Luce's program and, and help the high school soccer team be stronger. Uh, there's some really great, talented kids out there playing and excited to give them the opportunity to be there and play. Golf, um, Darren Parker coached our golf team last year. They play at the Waldo, um, down on 15 for the home matches. And then track and field, the eighth grade boys last year were conference champs uh, in the RRC meet. Year. It's a big way to chuck a shot up there. So it has some success. Last thing I want to talk about is literacy. So we talked about building character, building leadership. This is probably the one thing that we're most proud of right now at the middle school, and that's our <coughs> Tuesday. So we sat down early in the year and said, all right, we don't have enough time to get everything in. We want to get in for collaboration. We're struggling to get time for kids to read. And we're struggling to be able to pull kids to remediate. So what can we do? And the leadership team sat down and put together ideas and, and ran them back and forth. And what we came up with was this idea of R&R &R Tuesday. So we run a homeroom called Advisory Every Day. What we decided was to move that to first period for everybody. And when we walk in the door Tuesday morning, the kids go get a book. They read for the first hour of the day. If they need remediation, Half the teachers week one, half the teachers week two, they all are named. So one week you can pull kids to do extra school work or mediate. The other week you're just supervising everybody reading. And Mr. Cooper and uh, Ms. Stiles and I take the extra overflow kids as necessary and cover them. But we're reading for a solid 52 minutes to begin that day. Teachers are pulling small groups of kids to work on skill deficits. And one team, one department, a week is meeting with Mrs. Revere from 7.20 to 9 o'clock doing a 90, <coughs> well, 
or a 100 minute block of professional development. So we're getting all that done every Tuesday morning. Fortunately, we've had two hour delays and cancellations the last two, but. Um, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but this has been a really powerful thing to allow us to increase time in books and also allow our teachers to work in small groups with our kids. The last time we had this, I didn't have to watch any kids, and I walked up and down the hallways of the remediation groups. When you look in the window, the teacher is sitting in a circle with seven, eight kids, and they're just talking about stuff they need to do to get better. It's powerful. So we really are proud of this and hope that it continues to be beneficial for us. Our advisory period is a homeroom time. The kids have the same teacher all year, unless they're in related arts and they rotate every 12 weeks. But the set goals, the progress monitor, we check the catch-up cafe list, make sure the work's done, and we can grade checks. This is a group we do parent-teacher conferences with, and then embedded in advisories are grad weight groups. So we we probably have approximately 30 kids that we've designated into the grad weight program, and they're grouped in small groups. They're kids that generally have high needs or might be a graduation risk, and so they do goal setting, pro progress monitoring kind of a little more intensively with those teachers. And then they're also doing our, phil uh, our philanthropy. The sixth grade group of graduate kids are packing Viking Bills bags for us every week. So they're a part of that program. We've gone to uh, Feed My Starving Children. What was the, what did we, not this year, but in years past. Okay, yeah, they went up and packed the bags for the Gray Scott basketball tournament. Um, but we tried to get them an opportunity to go do some um, community service work through this program, too. Mrs. Olson has been at Midtown for a long time and uh, moved out to the middle school this year to help us with the group of kids and applied skills. And it's a fantastic program. You're going to hear a little bit later on today about Magical Meadows, but. Kathy's done a great job of not only working with the kids at the right levels and helping them grow, but also doing tons of blended learning opportunities. So these kids are getting to cook, they're getting to go out in the community and do things, and just learn life skills. Uh, last week, I got to eat pizza and dirt pudding that these guys and the Midtown Preschool kids uh, got together and cooked for our staff. So. Just lots of really neat learning experiences for the unique needs of these kids. And it's been a really powerful experience for them. At the middle school right now, for eighth graders, we're offering potentially five high school course credits this year. So on the flip side, looking at our advanced kids, kids that are taking algebra with Mr. Kirby right now can earn two credits towards their high school diploma. Kids that are taking biology with Ms. Huff can earn two credits in biology. And then every eighth grader has the opportunity to take preparing for colleges and careers. They're taking that in Mrs. Kimmel's class right now. That class will actually end this Friday. And they're earning a college credit in the pathways area by doing that PCC class here in eighth grade. So if they take care of business in that class, every eighth grader that walks out of here is going to at least have one credit in their credits bucket for graduation. So we're Excited about that, but there's some wavering in the state about whether they're going to let us keep that at the eighth grade or bump back to ninth grade. But as long as we can have it, we're going to keep doing that here so the kids clear that prerequisite out before they go to try to work through those college pathways. We've had a ton of off-site learning experiences this year. Uh, seventh graders went to Mary Lee, which is a geological center up by Albion, um, studying the rock cycle. We've Planned and canceled and planned and canceled the trip to the Junior Achievement Finance Park in Warsaw for our eighth graders. Tentatively, we're looking at dates in April now to be able to possibly make it up, but um, it's just a big economic study. So the kids learn about credit, checkbooks, life, living in a checkbook, and they go to this facility and basically walks them through all these different areas where they have to pay taxes and buy a house, pay for kids, pay for doctors, so all that. And then they just really kind of learn what it's like to actually have an income, have to pay bills, and see what's left at the end of the month. The uh, OrthoWorks set up an ortho tour 
in October, which is manufacturing month, and we went to Warsaw Area, Warsaw Area Career Center, Ortho Training Center, and Orthopedic, a couple orthopedic companies in Warsaw on that tour. So all of our eighth graders, all of our eighth graders got to go and, and kind of see what the orthopedic businesses have to offer and what kind of training opportunities we can provide them so that they can get into those businesses because a lot of those businesses are needing skilled labor right now. And then um, our sixth graders went to see play Annie at the Round Barn Theater at Mama Shakers. And then sixth grade now, I think three years in a row, has gone to Wagon Wheel right before Christmas for a play. It's part of a grant uh, in Fulton County, or in Cuyahoga County that's been put out. So we've taken advantage of that each of the last three years to be able to go see a play at the Wagon Wheel. It's a lot of fun for them to get out and do those things. Our district's invested a lot into professional learning communities, and I'm not going to belabor this much, but it's a critical process for us. Our growth is because we're doing this, and we're going to keep getting better by keeping that cycle of doing this going. So training people in the summer is critical. Those that haven't been trained, continuing to just work through, you know, looking basically at this pathway, and I shared this with you guys a couple board meetings ago, but this is what we do, this is our action plan. We, we look at the curriculum that we need to teach, we assess it, we figure out what the data is telling us, and we figure out what we've got to do with kids based on what they showed on that assessment. If they're not getting it, we're going to use that in our time and advisory to remediate them. If they are, we want to continue to push them so that we're moving them forward. But it's just a continuous cycle of looking at our curriculum, looking at our data, and making adjustments to what we do. Our improvement areas right now, I mean, we're at B for the first time in the history of the school. So we're super excited about that, but we want to get to the A. That, that's why our goals are set where they are. So we know these are areas of improvement that we want to focus on right now. English language arts proficiency is 58.8%. We want to get to seven. And we're, we're building, we're working there. So in our time with more reading and remediation and the professional development is going to help us. But this is also an adoption year for language arts. And so this is a critical time for us to look at what we need for the next six years. And what's going to fit with our middle school uh, philosophy and, and how we can support our language arts teachers moving forward and help them uh, to be successful in the classroom with kids. Uh, our other area, we want to sustain our high growth score and our mathematics performance gains. Our growth performance was over 100%. We want to stay there because that means we're moving kids a year's worth of growth across the board. Math has seen some great gains. We want to stay there. We want to keep growing kids in that area. So, advisory period for student supports, R&R &R time, Alex Math. We have a Title I math focus with Ms. May, Para, who helps with math support there. Uh, Mrs. Revere is huge to what we do here at the school. She helps with professional development. She helps us design curriculum. And there's some days she just helps with people that are breaking down in the classroom and need help. She's awesome. And she's one of the reasons why we're moving where we're moving as well. So, our goals over this next three year cycle, we want to move English language arts to 70%. We want to move math from 62.9 to 70%. And we want to stay where we're at with growth. We want to be over 100 points with combined growth rate every year. So, any questions? There's tons of stuff that I probably didn't share, and there's probably stuff that these guys out here are thinking, why didn't you put this in there? Because there's great stuff going on in this building every day. I'm super proud of our staff, uh, from teachers to parents to coach, to custodians to our coaching staff. And everybody here is, is doing great things, and it's exciting to be in a building where people are rowing the boat in the same direction. So, any questions? Great job, <clears throat> Great job to your staff. It's, it's amazing. So, uh, it's, it's very eye-opening to what everything that's going on here. Not seeing it, knowing it's, you know, 
I'm going to see once a year, but uh, the man the board guy wants to say thank you, and I think there's a round of applause for the other <laughs> Presentations, they do all the work. So <laughs> this is all them. Great job, yes. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, number six, uh, student reports. Dylan. Okay. Okay, well, uh, swimming did really well at sectional. And then last Sunday, uh, we went laser tagging and we went to church in FFA, and that was a really fun experience. And then uh, FFA weeks this week, and uh, Friday with the teacher with the most money in their bucket has to kiss a critter. So <laughs> that's pretty, uh, pretty funny. And then uh, uh, tomorrow we go and reach the second graders at Akron and Mentone, both schools. And then Friday is tractor drive-in day, and that's and FFA week then. And then robotics has their competition on this Saturday. So that was really cool too. Didn't, didn't you help raise money for something this weekend? Oh yeah, I did a full plunge this weekend. Wow. <laughs> where are you? Where are you? Uh, up there at uh, Warsaw at Center Lake. Okay. Awesome. Special Olympics, right? Yeah. And what, what time's the dinner this week for the FFA? Oh, we have our appreciation supper uh, Wednesday night. And it's, uh, I don't know, about six or so. Okay. What's the critter? Do we know what the critter is? It's the pig. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious. Good job. Thank you. Um, Friday is the last home boys basketball game. Um, and then it's also Saturday night and track started last week and we have our first indoor meet March 2nd at PFW. And then next week is Riley week. And it's sort of like a second homecoming week. So we have themes every day. The themes this year are PJ Day, Retro Day, Nerd, Athlete, and then Red. And we will have a dance Saturday, March 2nd, to raise money for Riley. And if we raise $2,000, then Mr. Pipe and Mr. Prescott have to wear those blow-up sumo wrestler costumes and wrestle in front of the whole school. All right. So, so who do we contribute the money to? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. That's everything for Spotlight.